Hey everyone, this is Bill Hernandez with RockBandReviews.com and thank you for joining me today for another interview segment. Today I have the great pleasure to speak with Perry Richardson, who is the bassist for the Christian rock band Striper. With their 1983 debut album, The Yellow and Black Attack, Striper forever changed the face of heavy music, becoming the first Christian metal band to break into the mainstream. In 1986, the band's third record, To Hell with the Devil, would rocket them to the top, spawning hit singles, Calling on You, and Honestly, with their music videos becoming some of the most requested on MTV. From heavy rockers to powerful anthems and beautiful ballads, Striper had something that would appeal to everyone. Harry Richardson and Striper will be performing live tomorrow night at the Culture Room in Fort Lauderdale. And believe me, this is one show you definitely do not want to miss. How you doing today, Perry? Hey, Bill. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Oh, man. It's, a, it's, a, it's an awesome pleasure, man. Um, how does it feel to be back on a tour bus again? <laughs> it all came back to me, man. It was, uh, it's like riding uh, a bike. It's, it's, it's right. It's not a, you know, the, the bus part of this lifestyle is one of the low points. Right? You're stuck on there stuck on there with 11 other people, and it's kind of crowded, but... And, you know, it, uh, it helps us uh, get to the show, so it's all good. Now, of course, as you know, the world has gone through a, a metamorphosis with the COVID-19 virus in the, in the last two years. Um, during the lockdown, uh, what were you doing to, to keep busy? Were you writing or, or painting the rooms in the house, mowing the lawn? What was going on? Yeah, yeah for me, it was uh, a lot of that. Uh, building the house uh, moved back home to the Myrtle Beach area in South Carolina and uh, we got a new house and I've just been working on that you know getting that like we wanted and uh, you know my wife keeps me busy and uh, but I did uh, one other project not too long ago was a project that uh, Robert and I the rhythm section on the on a new band called Clean Break uh, it was, uh, I'm not sure when it's going to be out, maybe July, mm-hmm. but uh, it's with, uh, James Durbin, and uh, it's really good, and had a good time recording that, and uh, that's basically the only thing musically I did. I, I, I think for a lot of bands, um, even though it was, it was so devastating for so many people, um, the kind of the COVID-19 virus for a lot of the traveling bands that uh, had spent... Um, um, a lot of time on the road, like ten, uh, you know, ten months uh, at a time out on the road, away from their families and such. It was kind of a blessing in disguise uh, to actually be able to spend some time at home with their families. Sure, that, yeah, we, that we've, my wife, we just had our fifteenth wedding anniversary last week, and uh, we've never spent this, this much time together. <laughs> so, but, uh, but. Um, it's been great, you know. I've, I've loved being home. And hadn't been, we didn't go out much, but uh, you know, we tried to stay safe through all this stuff, and and uh, so far so good. But uh, you know, it's also good to be back out on the road, and we just miss playing live so much. And uh, we, what was so, such a bummer for us, we didn't get the tour on our last record. Mm-hmm. That we think is one of the best things we've ever done, and and uh, it was a shame we didn't get the tour on that. But we have a new one coming out later this year, and uh, keep it going. So for the for the new music coming out, is there a, a, a title yet? No, we haven't decided on a title yet, and uh, um, yeah, we, we we have a few choices that we can't say anything about yet. Sure. But, uh, we're narrowing it down. Uh, won't be long. <laughs> now, um, as a bass player, what was it that drew you to that particular instrument? Well, my, uh, my dad played bass. It was the main instrument. He played, he played piano and guitar and all that. But his main thing was bass, and there was one laying around the house. And it, that got me interested in it. He, he taught me what he knew and uh, took off from there. I mean, I really didn't start playing, I guess, until I was maybe 14, 14, 15, and uh, I got 
interested in rocks for the first time. And I've been singing in gospel quartet. I was influenced by a lot of country stuff. And my dad played country and bluegrass. So that's really all I ever heard until I think the first thing I ever heard that blew my mind was Sly and the Family Stone. Mm-hmm. It kind of changed my life, man. It's uh, what I've wanted to do ever since. Now, uh, I see that the, the Kickstarter campaign to launch the, uh, the Striper documentary, I mean, the quota I think that you guys sought after was like 100,000, but actually got more than double that, uh, which, goes to yeah. Sh- yeah, which goes to show how much you know, Striper's fans want this to happen. Um, any updates on the progress of that? No, uh, not really. We're working on uh, picking out a director, which is... It's really hard because we have a certain vision we have in mind to go for and uh, to find someone that can, can bring that to life for us is going to be a tough pick. But we're looking right now, and uh, I mean, it's going to this is going to be a long project. It's not, it's not coming out next year or anything. I mean, it's going to be a while, but we're going to do our best to make it the very best documentary anybody's seen. I mean, we we got that much money to spend on it, thank, thank God, and we're going to put that to good use and not, you know, not blow it and make it the wrong decision, so we're taking our time on it. Good, good. We're certainly excited and looking forward to that. So, um, so lastly, what is next for you personally and for Striper going down the road? Well, we're just going to keep playing, man, as long as we can, as long as we're having fun doing it, you know, and... Uh, as a band, we're doing, uh, we go, with the last show here in, in Florida is the, the last, the last show on this run. So we'll go home for a couple of weeks. I think our next show is in Puerto Rico. Um, then we do, you know, just do some fly dates and cruise and stuff like that. Get us through the year. And I think later in the fall, we're going to do a, another bus run. So it'll be, uh, and it cools down a little bit. <laughs> so get out to uh, headquarters for the West Coast. Well, it sounds like a plan, man. And, uh, man, guys, stay safe out there. You know, even though everything's kind of calming down, you still got to be, you know, have some due diligence, uh, you know, with COVID and all that stuff. So I pray that you guys stay safe and to let everyone know that Striper will be performing tomorrow night at Culture Room here in Fort Lauderdale. Tickets are available. Grab them while you can, because it's been a while since we've seen you in our in our neighborhood here, and we're really looking forward to it. Well, we can't wait, dude, and I'm loving this, uh, this Fort Lauderdale scenery and weather, man. <laughs> Out by the beach right now, so it's it's all good, and we're, we're loving it. And, yeah, we invite everybody to come out and have a good time together. But uh, we'll... Uh, you know, we're just going to continue throughout the year, so everything uh, is going to be a real busy year for us. All right, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow night. Stay safe, and uh, safe travels on the road, man. We're looking forward to a good show. Awesome. See you there. All Thanks. right, later. Bye-bye, bud. All right, bye